Hey folks, welcome back to Tech Tech and More Tech. I'm Carlo, and this is the Home Assistant Blue. As always, if you prefer a more detailed written review, head on over to techtechandmoretech.com or check the link in the description just below that like button. A few weeks ago, Home Assistant hosted an online conference talking about the state of Home Assistant and future developments. They also unexpectedly announced Home Assistant Blue, which is a Home Assistant hub. It is essentially Home Assistant pre-installed on an Odroid N2 Plus. They say it is a limited edition, but really the only limited part is the cool blue housing. Once the limited run is over, you will still be able to buy the whole bundle, but it won't have the case. Home Assistant did upload a 3D model to Thingiverse, so if you wanted to 3D print your own housing, you could do that. Now, the first thing you might want to compare this to is a Raspberry Pi 4, as that is the most common hardware people run in Home Assistant, myself included. If we take a look at the hardware side by side, Home Assistant Blue has a slightly more powerful processor using a 6-core Amlogic S922X, which is a quad-core Cortex-A73 and a dual-core Cortex-A53. The Raspberry Pi 4 uses a single Broadcom BCM2711, which is a quad-core Cortex-A72. The Raspberry Pi 4 comes in a 2, 4, or 8 gigabyte memory options, while Home Assistant Blue only offers a 4 gig option. I suspect Home Assistant doesn't need more than 4 gigs almost ever. The biggest difference is going to be the storage. Raspberry Pis run on a micro SD card, but they can also work off SSD with the right adapter. A lot of users have switched to this as micro SD cards are notorious for dying and because SSDs tend to be quicker in performance and reliability. Home Assistant Blue has a 128 gig eMMC SSD, which will provide quick performance, but also great reliability. Home Assistant notes on their site that this is especially good against power outages, which can corrupt other storage mediums like micro SD cards. Home Assistant Blue also has a full-size HDMI as opposed to the two micro HDMIs on a, on a Raspberry Pi 4. It has four USB 3 slots compared to the two USB 3s and two USB 2s on a Raspberry Pi. They both have gigabit Ethernet and the Home Assistant Blue has an additional 3.5mm headphone jack. What it doesn't have is Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, so you are forced to connect this via Ethernet to your network. Bluetooth could be useful if you wanted to hook up peripherals, but because it comes pre-installed with Home Assistant that is purely web-based, I can understand why they omitted both of these radios. Unlike just about all other smart home hubs though, it doesn't have Zigbee or Z-Wave, which is a big miss for me, and here's why. If we take a step back and look at who the core audience of Home Assistant users are, I think we're going to see a lot of pretty tech-savvy people. Not everyone will necessarily be on the same level or have experience with coding, but with some help of tutorials like mine, you can get a Home Assistant instance running pretty quickly and pretty easily, and it'll be reliable, just like mine's been. If the purpose of Home Assistant Blue is to expand the audience by having Home Assistant pre-installed, then I think it's a big swing and a miss, because getting Home Assistant installed is absolutely the easiest part. Getting Zigbee and Z-Wave up and running is much more work and a bit of a hurdle, which Home Assistant Blue does not overcome for you. Which it would if it had Z-Wave and Zigbee built in, or even if it came bundled with a stick like this one. Alternatively, if the purpose of Home Assistant Blue was to come up with a single integrated device that was good looking and was the best dedicated hardware Home Assistant could run on, well then congrats to Home Assistant. I think the reality is somewhere in the middle. Home Assistant is fantastic at immediately identifying smart home devices on your network when you first set it up. And perhaps this is the grab they're looking for with new users. All your Wi-Fi and smart devices will now be connected via Home Assistant, and then you can slowly fully transition and add your own Zigbee and Z-Wave hub. Setup of the Home Assistant Blue is a simple three-step process. Plug in your network cable, plug in the power cable, and then go to homeassistant.local colon 8123 or download the mobile app. It's very quick to boot and immediately you can set up your home assistant. Because I already had it running on my Raspberry Pi, I just created a full snapshot on the Raspberry Pi, disconnected that, and then select that snapshot to restore on the Home Assistant Blue and it was up and running. I also plugged in my Nortec Z-Wave ZigBee USB stick and that was automatically recognized and configured. 
The only thing I had to update was my Ecobee author authorization pin and everything was up and running smoothly. I tested performance with a few different device types. Wi-Fi connected devices, Zigbee connected to another hub like Hue, Zigbee connected to the Home Assistant directly, Z-Wave, and then a Homebridge plugin and a simple motion-based automation. In terms of performance, I did not notice a difference in automation speed, nor in the speed of toggling the state of my devices. I have around 50 devices connected to Home Assistant, which isn't a ton, so perhaps those that have more devices will see a difference in speed if they're noticing any lag on the Raspberry Pis. But I think you're much more likely to have a bottleneck in your wireless network in terms of responsiveness and speed rather than the processing power of whatever your home assistant is running on. As far as reliability goes, that's kind of a big selling point and that's something to touch on much further down the line as I haven't had the blue for long enough to be able to quantify that aspect of the device. So all of this brings us to the golden question, should you buy the home assistant blue? As always, we start with the price, which is $140. It's a bit more on the expensive side of things, but if you compare it to Raspberry Pi 4 with 120 gig SSD, the price is quite similar. For the small difference in price, you're getting more processing power and a nicer overall package. If you already have a Raspberry Pi 4, then there's no real reason to upgrade unless you plan to get a new one anyways, then the Home Assistant Blue is certainly worth considering. If you're new to Home Assistant and don't know what to buy to run it on, this out-of-the-box solution will certainly get you started with the right foot forward towards a comprehensive, locally operated smart home. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to like and subscribe button for plenty more videos to come. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below and I will get to them as best I can. And until next time, see ya.